Hi there guys. So today we actually have a really fun video. It is a collab with Katie Bookster. And what Katie and I did was we decided to go to the thrift stores in our local towns and pick up some items and send a box to each other. So she sent on over this box of very interesting items. And I can't wait to share with you guys what I did with these items because I actually decided that I wanted to challenge myself in a couple ways. One, I wanted to make sure that I used every item she sent. And two, I wanted to make sure that it was something that I could make into a gift as a last minute gift guide idea. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into our first project. For the first project, Katie had sent over two of these red lampshades and they were definitely the item that I was the most worried about, but it actually ended up being my favorite project in the end. So the first thing I did was I just removed the fabric from each of these lampshades and I just did so using some scissors and then I just kind of pulled back on that fabric and there was a little bit of ribbon wrapped around the tops and the bottoms of each lampshade. So I just removed that by uncoiling it and then threw that part away. The trickiest part I would say about this project was I didn't know if I wanted to do two or if I wanted to do just one larger propagation cage vase, which is what I ended up doing. So what I needed to do was just remove one of the insides of one of the lampshades where the light bulb would actually sit inside of. So I just did so using some wire cutters and I did the exact same thing on each side to remove that center piece. And with our propagation tube inside, I just attached the bottoms to each other and I liked the way that looked. So first I just spray painted each lampshade individually with black spray paint. And now I'm going to take some E6000 and just apply the smallest dab on each kind of like little prong section where it met the bottom. And to keep that hold there, because it takes a long time for E6000 to really cure, and I want to make sure that it was nice and solid, I tried to use some clothespins, but it didn't end up working out. The thing that I found to be the most helpful was using just something heavy. So I just took a brick that I had sitting in my garage and I placed it on top. So then that way it was nice and secure there. And I'm just going to leave that here for 24 hours. And now that that has solidified, I'm just going to spray paint it one last time and then add our propagation tube inside and take take a clipping from one of my own plants to gift to someone else. For the next gift idea, Katie had sent over this really decorative cutting board and it was really pretty, but the person I'm gifting this to has, again, very neutral style. And at the thrift store, I always find people doing different things with cutting boards, so I wanted to take a stab at it myself. And one of my good friends actually just wrote a cookbook and to support her, I ended up buying one for myself as well as one for a family member as a gift and it's called Desert Honey. I will link it in the description box below. She is so talented and you should definitely check her out. And a cutting board and a cookbook are just a nice pair as a gift. So what I wanted to make for this cookbook was, or any cookbook really, was a slot so that way it could sit upright if you're following a recipe. So essentially we're making a cutting board cookbook holder. So I did find a couple things that I wanted to try out at the Dollar Tree. So they just had these like little slabs of wood and I liked that it felt really heavy duty, but it was also just too bulky and I wanted something a little bit more delicate because I felt that that fit the cutting board that was existing better. And with those two side pieces pulled apart, now I'm just kind of left with a front and a bottom and I detached the back so I could attach it to the cutting board itself first. I wanted to make sure that there was going to be enough space for the actual cookbook to sit inside of. So I just kind of took one of the scrap pieces and I just placed it on the inside and took a pencil and just made a marking straight down. And that was just to make sure that whether the cookbook be opened or closed, it would have enough room to sit inside of. And after I made my markings, I made two just in case I messed up. That's why there's two markings there, but I just took my miter saw to it. Now, if you don't have a miter saw, that's totally okay. You can use an X-Acto knife and just kind of score the line that you made until it can kind of just break apart. It is pretty flimsy. It's from the Dollar Tree, so um, it's strong enough to hold up the cookbook, but also kind of easy to work with. 
And as I mentioned earlier, the person that I'm making this for has very just kind of simple style. It is for a male. So I felt that that pattern was a little too feminine for him. So I just primed it first and then I'm just kind of sanding off the brush marks before I spray paint it. And I know I always spray paint everything black, but this time I wanted to do a charcoal gray color. But before I spray paint it, I just want to take one of those back slats um, from that little wooden box and just apply it so then that way it has something for the slot to grip onto besides just the cutting board just to give it a little bit more security. And to do so, I just used some E6000 as well as a foam brush. And I feel like hot glue in this situation might be fine, but I just love the extra security that E6000 gives you. It takes longer for your projects to be completed, but I think overall it gives you a better hold in the end. And with that back piece attached, now I'm gonna do the first coat of spray paint over the entire front as well as the back. And for the back, I'm taking an old picture frame backing, which has the part that could kick out so that way it can stand upright and the cookbook can be there near your stovetop while you're cooking to follow a recipe. I ended up having to do two coats of this charcoal chalked spray paint and that gave a really nice coverage. But another thing I just wanted to make sure was it would be able to be wiped down because like I said, you're gonna be maybe by a stove, cooking, oil, things you might wanna be able to wipe it down. So I did apply a glossy finish and then just to finish it off and add just one more little detail, I ended up taking some suede rope and just attaching it where that little brown ribbon used to be and just making a little slot there in case they have like a rack that they would wanna hang this on. And that finishes off our cutting board cookbook holder. For the third project, Katie had sent over two of these trinket trays. Now, I'm not sure if she purposefully sent me two of everything just in case I messed up, which I so appreciated, but I ended up just like having a little bit more creative freedom. So it was really nice to be able to have two. So I'm gonna show you guys two different options. These little trays, I'm not sure, I think they're used for something in the kitchen, but I don't know exactly what they're supposed to be used for. We are going to be making some little pressed floral trinket trays. I've actually seen Lone Fox do this many years ago, but he made a mold out of one and I think he did it as a paperweight. So this is gonna be a little bit different because this isn't gonna be something that's gonna be able to be released from the mold. So it's just gonna sit inside of here. I bought the resin as well as the pressed florals off of Amazon. So I will link those in the description box below. And the gold leaf, I wanna say I bought on Amazon as well. I will see if this is still available on Amazon. It's been years since I've had it and I still have so much left. I surprisingly have never used resin. So I literally just followed the descriptions on the back of the bottles and they couldn't make it easier. It's A for the resin and B for the epoxy. And basically it's just a lot of mixing. So you wanna make sure you're doing equal parts. So basically I took one of these bottles since I had two trays. So I took one of the bottles and I split each bottle in half in two separate cups. And then you wanna mix that pretty well. I mix mine for about two minutes. And then you wanna do that exact same thing with your B bottle. So dumping half of that in one cup and half in another cup and then mixing each cup for about two minutes. And then you're going to mix B into A for about three to five minutes per the instructions on the bottle. And once that's fully mixed is when you can start to add um, all of the things that you wanna add to it. So I think people add paint sometimes. I chose to do a little bit of the gold leaf in this one and then the pressed florals as well. And then I just stirred that up a little bit so that way it broke up some of the gold leaf and there weren't like huge clumps in there. And then I just took the pressed florals and just kind of delicately placed the florals kind of all around in a pattern that I thought looked aesthetically pleasing before topping off the trinket tray. This is definitely a fun project to do if you have a lot of people to gift for. You can definitely spread this up even further and make like four trinket trays and gift each one to a sibling or something like that. And it's totally customizable. You can do whatever pattern, paint, floral arrangement that you would like. And I think it is a really budget friendly option and it shows a little personality.
And for the next project, my mom is just one of those people that I swear has a memo board everywhere because you know what? I now understand having kids, mom brain is a real thing. So Katie sent over this basket and it was flat, but there was a little bit of a lip on it. So I thought this would be the perfect thing to hang up on a wall with a little memo pad inside of it. So all I did was I took some black spray paint and I spray painted it all the way around multiple times with some matte black spray paint and then I just finished it off with some clear spray paint so when the memo pads were getting switched out it didn't just take the black paint off with it and you can buy memo pads literally anywhere but these ones just came from the Dollar Tree so all I'm doing is I'm just kind of folding back that um, top covering so then you're just left with like the paper part that you could write on and to attach it I'm just going to use a clothespin and I was going to leave the natural color of the clothespin but once I did see how that would look I really decided that I wanted to make sure that it was black as well and then to attach it to the wall I'm going to do my little curtain hook thumbtack trick that you can get from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to, to attach that to the top of the basket and to attach the clothespin as well as that curtain ring. I'm just gonna use hot glue for this project because it's kind of like wood to wood and I feel like it's the perfect medium to make sure everything is attached really well. And for the fifth project, Katie had sent over this very, just kind of normal vase. And I'm like, okay, how do I spice this up a little bit? So I was looking online and the thing that I gravitated towards the most was the sort of like mixed metal vase that I have been seeing on Crate and Barrel, Pottery Barn, and they're usually pretty expensive. So I'm just using some spray paints that I have on hand. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going in with Krylon's metallic gold spray paint and I'm just kind of like lightly dusting just like one coat over this whole vase. And then this spray paint bottle that I have is actually no good, but it kind of worked out good for this project. Um, it just kind of kept giving me like lines of spray paint. So I think the nozzles messed up a little bit, but it is in a kind of like a bronzy metallic finish. So I'm just kind of going all around that gold. I didn't wait till the gold dried. I just went right on top of it. And I'm just kind of scattering that all throughout as well. And then I went back over with the gold when I felt that there was too much of that gun metal -y color. And then to top that off, I used some aged glaze spray paint just to make it feel a little bit more organic. And lastly, I applied a clear finish on top of the whole vase and I headed on over to the grocery store and picked up some nice florals to put inside of the vase. And it's just a nice, simple gift if you are on a tight budget. And for the last project, you can't really even call this a DIY because I didn't necessarily do anything to it, but I am going to use this as a means of gifting it to someone else by what I put inside of it. So she sent over this basket and it kind of has like a square part and then like a circle part. So I decided this would be the perfect thing for like a little mini picnic basket for some newlyweds. So I went to the Dollar Tree and I found one of those little containers. You could put water, you could put wine, you could put anything you want in one of these little containers. And then I put some little plastic wear as well as a serving tray and a date night card idea so I just feel like it's a nice way to just kind of elevate your presentation on gifting and that is all that I have for you guys today thank you so much for watching if you like today's video please make sure you give it a big thumbs up and go on over now to Katie's channel and make sure you watch to see what I sent her and what amazing items she decides to create herself I will see you guys in the next one bye